when I first started making music, uh, I wasn't really aware of what a producer was. I just thought bands got together and they wrote their music and they went into a studio maybe with an engineer. And then it was only when I started doing guitar sessions for people that I I asked the engineer, like, who are those two guys at the back of the room? And <laughs> the engineer would say, oh, one's the songwriter and one's the producer. And then the penny dropped. I've always been a, a big fan of underground culture and, and I just always DJed from a young age and, and just been passionate about, about music outside of the mainstream. And I think that then getting together, as you mentioned, with, with artists like Plan B and Kano, they were really coming from, from places with Kano, for example. He, he was a big part of the grime scene that was developing. But, but I felt that the common ground that we could we could meet on was like this garage garage sound that I was really familiar with. And, and I think as a musician, you, you can always put genres together and, and make sense of it, you know? So we, we found the common ground in, in garage and, and rap and hip hop. And then it was a, a question of immersing myself into grime music and finding a way of, of pushing it into different realms. The thing about Kano is that, he really wanted to push with live instrumentation. And I think that that became something that I, I was known for that. I mean, I think that then I felt good because I wasn't, I wasn't just doing the same thing as everyone else. I felt that I, I, I could, I could take it on in my own way and actually contribute to, to the genre rather than appropriating it or, 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 or stealing it. I was, I was just trying to shine a spotlight on it. In terms of my personality, I'm just really interested in people and I just want to talk to people. And, and often the talk leads you into, into getting a feel for, for what the artist wants to do. And I think that by the time you come to actually make the music, it becomes quite easy for me. In fact, I, I wrote a song uh, with, with a great artist last week and, and I asked her to pull a card from Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt's uh, deck of oblique strategies and the, she picked this card and the and the card said prepare slowly execute quickly so I said to her we're going to test this to the max and she said what do you mean I said well we will prepare for this song without any instruments or without we're going to work out the kind of song that we want to write we'll we'll come with as much preparation in terms of are the notes going to be long and they going to be short? Is it an up tempo song? Is it is it minor? Is it major? And we literally planned out the song in three hours, and then within an hour, we'd written it because you're no longer scrabbling around with so many options. You know, because you can walk around my studio. We have live drums, we have pianos, and we have and even walking around Logic or or Ableton or Pro, you, the the, the the decisions now are, are limitless. You know, it's the kind of the paradox of choice, you know, where you, you, you have too much choice sometimes. And I think that, that that conversation about really being clear about what you want in the studio is, is, is such a time saver. Coming to do my own record, I thought, look, I have to have a point of view. I have to have a, a process. I want this to be different. I want it to be driven by me like it's a future utopia track. And I never found any artists push back on that. I think that if an artist comes in to your world, then the artists that I've been working with are very receptive to, to trying something new and to, to being open and to, to, to having a journey into the world of Future Utopia. The process of making the music was really exciting. And then to hear mu the, the artists interpret the music but also respond to the questions the 12 questions on the record was was really exciting and I'd picked a question to give to each artist so there was a lot of thought process it wasn't like I did 80 songs with different artists and I picked the best 12 it was me thinking really deeply about who would really be the best person for a particular section and then me translating that to them when they came in it's important to say that these, these questions are, are very deep, open questions. So we have questions like fear or faith, how much is enough, 
what's in a name. What I had to do sometimes was just was just say, look, this this is. I'm looking for the answer to the question according to you. Like this isn't this isn't about you feeling like you have to be the Dalai Lama or Mahatma Gandhi, you know, saying something so profound. So, for example, with Arlo Parks, the question was, what matters most? And she immediately felt a little overwhelmed by the scope of that. I said, but, but what matters most to you at this moment? And she said, well, I've just split up with my partner. I said, well, let's write a song about that. And, and so Strangers in the Night was born from that. And it's, 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 it's a love song, essentially, about, about Arlo splitting up with her partner. I'm really excited about, about people hearing the essence really of, 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 of my sonics in the studio is, is born out of a love of vintage synths coupled with modern processing. It's, it's processing on live drums, on, on pianos, on real Wurlitzers, on, on my guitar collection, live bass synths. It's, it's very diverse musically, but that is indicative of who I am as a, as a creative, but I think that the the way that these sounds are processed are what make it me. I recorded it all myself, so I've worked with some great engineers. But I just, you know, this to me felt very personal and very wanted it to to feel the love that that a pack that was homemade would feel. It's bespoke and it's. It's not me making a load of sound and giving them to, to my engineer. It's, it's about how I can make these sounds unique. So whether it's, whether it's playing them back off a, a CDJ at a different pitch, whether it's putting them into the MPC and, and then putting them through my vintage outboard. As a producer, so much of the stuff is done from a subconscious level where I'm picking sounds from my head and making the sounds on guitar and I'm, I'm not really then going back and classifying them as this incredible sample collection. It's like every sound that I create is unique to the, to the track that I'm working on. So coming up with this was very good from an organizational point of view because I thought, okay, let's, let's create some killer 808s and some killer chords and some and it became like a really cathartic interesting process to 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 think what kind of sounds would be indicative of of me and what would people enjoy and what would people use and and I love the process it it really helped me i think become a better producer <laughs> 